On September 4th, 1972, Isham Abdul Giles came upon this world. Born in Elizabeth, New Jersey, at Elizabeth General Hospital. At the age of 11, he decided to write his first poem ever, not realizing that it would be the spark to ignite the flame. As the years went by, Isham continued with his writing, using his newfound instrument to pour out his emotion onto his pages. By age 34, he began writing an autobiography entitled Eyes Closed, Mind Open. But that changed after the death of one of his close friends. With the sudden loss, the autobiography changed into prolific poetry. A collection of his work that spoke about the depths of happiness, sadness, loss, gain, and politics. Giles is a self-publishing author who gains rave reviews from critics, calling his work gritty with realism and having a strong dialogue. Earning some success with prolific poetry, he published his second book in April titled Quote Me, a book full of motivational quotes, practical advice, and words of wisdom. There is nothing that can stop his creative process that runs through his mind, and as he earns more recognition, Isham is excited to release his third book, Eyes Closed, Mind Open, later this year. With two books underneath his belt, prolific poetry and quote me, and a third book coming out, eyes closed, mind open. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Isha Abdul Giles. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Reading on prolific poetry, I know you say it's fictional, but the way you really express your words gives real meaning behind them. When gathering all your writing, did you know that any of them would not make into prolific poetry? Also, did you know it would be a continuation of your second book? Thank you very much. Yes. There were many that did not make it. That was done intentionally to leave room for a part two of Prolific. The second book, Quote Me, it was also based on a ton of experience, but I did not know it would be a continuation. So, now I have two books. Now with your work, where does the line between nonfiction and fiction separate with your writing? Immediately. I may have used fictional characters to describe real life situations, but that's where it ends. Like in my poem, Superman, sometimes I feel like I carry the weight of the world. In my poem, The Two Sides of Me, I show that any man can become a monster. We all have the ability to be angry and full of rage, but it's all in how we control it. It's interesting how you give a definition before each one of your poems. Is that how you write your poems, or do you add a definition and then write the poem afterwards? Depending on the topic, I will use a quote from either myself or family member. Maybe the Quran or the Bible as well. But to answer correctly, all the writing was done before. With all the success from the books and receiving so much positive feedback, how do you remain so humble? Prayer and knowing what it took to get me here. I take none of this for granted. When trying to self-publish your first book, was there any hesitation that it would get lost and no one would get a chance to read it? No, I did my research, so I was well aware of the process and the access people will have to purchase my work. With so many emotions from these short stories, have you ever considered writing a full book on one particular story? Yes, I have. Eyes closed, mind open will be that book. Okay, okay. Having self-published your own books, what do you have to say for people trying to work their way up to your status? I have time, patience, and sacrifice. Save as much money as you can. Remember, you can never go wrong investing in yourself. Know exactly what it is you want to do. Do you want to own a business or self-publish a book independently? There is a difference. Do your research. Since your third book is coming out, how have you improved on self-publishing your own books? Again, research. 
<laughs> promoting early, video, posters, advertising through social media, and of course interviews like this one. Mm, nice, nice. With the third book containing the cycle of the first two books, will the fourth book be the autobiography that you first started to write about? All right. Well, actually, the third book is the autobiography. Eyes closed, mind open. Semi autobiography. The fourth book will be a part two of the prolific, in which I will release in 2014. You're a very spiritual man, stick to his beliefs. How much of it do you use in your own writing? Also, does it make you feel like you can be more open with people, or do you try not to offend them as much? Well, I'm not over religious or under. If I'm writing about a topic and it came through me through God, I will let it be known. I'm open as I can possibly be. I'm a praying man and I'm a believing man. I'm never intending to offend anyone, but not all will like my writing. That's just the ways of man. I think it's where in your book you show people that what they feel is normal and they're not alone in the world. Besides people reading the book to connect with one another, what do you want to get out of it? I want people to realize that we human beings have more in common and are more the same than we are different. I want the reader to realize as they read this book that they may have experienced something similar and may have handled it the same way or maybe a little bit different, but that's pretty much it. Do you have any last words for your friends, family, and fans that are tuning in? Yes. Thank you, everyone. I am truly grateful. Remember, always believe in self, even when others won't. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you, Ishan, for letting us share your stories with us. Don't forget to pick up a copy of Prolific Poetry and quote me in stories right now. And in September 2013, to pick up his copy of Eyes Closed, Mind Open. Thank you so much, Ishan. No problem, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you for joining. take a moment to speak on change because for many years I thought it wouldn't be possible if you want and deserve change you have to make it start with you and what's around you when we cope with difficult situations in our lives we sometimes reassure ourselves by saying that everything happens for a reason for some of us thinking this way it makes it easier to deal with relationship problems financial crisis disease and death it can be disastrous to think that bad things merely happen through chance or accident but they do Trust me, I know. Change starts with sacrifice. If you want or expect any kind of transformation in your life, you have to change what you're accustomed to. That means people, places, and situations. My change started with a pen, a way for me to release the things I held within. I never intended or set out to become an author. I merely wanted to share my thoughts. Now some may say, why is he downplaying this? Because it's the truth. And what I've learned is that there is no limit when God has set a course with I am now a published author of two books and working on a third. I own and operate the publishing company I work for. So you see, never limit yourself or your ability to change. You can and will make a difference.